Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So we are working in my sketchbook today. So this sketchbook is obviously made by the lovely Pearly. So if you are interested in this, please follow them on Instagram and Twitter. I'll leave the information in the description below. But today we are actually working on technically the first spread in the sketchbook. So I am going to keep it quite simple. So if I remember correctly, we are going to be using the high tech C kind of little multi pen and I'm using a light blue graphite for the sketch for today's little spread. Now, I do not think I actually show the entire sketching portion for today's little spread because the blue is almost barely visible on my camera so you can kind of see it if you look very hard but I don't really want to do a few minutes of this footage so in the end I decided that I would just sketch kind of like off camera and then I will come back to do the actual coloring and inking for today because we are doing a two color marker spread which is like one of my favorite ways to fill up a sketchbook spread in any kind of sketchbook or notebook so kind of with the sketching out of the way, I ended up drawing only like four masakis. I added some flowers and I added his name at the very top. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the actual format and the kind of layout of the spread. But I do have this other sketchbook that has all my marker swatches. So we are going to pick two colors. Now I did not have a plan for the colors initially. So I am going to be picking kind of like blindly and doing a little bit of a test to see what colors we want to use. So usually Usually in my sketchbook, whenever I do any kind of marker spreads, I tend to choose markers that fit the character and their color palette. But for this time, I ended up picking colors that are kind of like Masaki adjacent. So obviously the turquoise green color is very much Masaki's color. It's kind of his sweater color and his earring colors as well. So I usually use that in place for any of the greens in his outfit as well. So like, or not in his outfit, for his eyes, I guess. But usually I like to pair it up with something that is of a warmer color. So instead of doing something like brown or like a peach tone, which I tend to use for Masaki a lot, or even like an orange, I ended up using just a very vibrant yellow. Now, I think the very first time I ever reviewed these pens, and they sent them to me. I think I used the exact same color palette, which happens to be this kind of like turquoise color and a yellow. And I do like this color combination. It's very fun and vibrant and kind of like in your face a little bit, but also yellow for some reason, or at least like a lot of the juicier kind of yellow colors, they just don't show a lot of streaking. So I think it's like a very fun color to use in your sketchbook if you want to block out anything or color something that has like less streaks, but don't want to sacrifice your paper to any bleed through. Because these are water-based markers, I don't really have to worry about bleed through at all. All I have to do is worry a little bit about the pilling. The moisture and like the ink or whatever is in the marker kind of sits on the top. So oftentimes if you're rubbing back and forth, you'll end up tearing away at the paper and it starts to pill where it kind of gets like all the little paper fibers and it kind of leaves like little debris everywhere. So you just have to worry about that. But for the most part right here, I didn't have to do too many passes. The yellow is just very fun to work with. Like I said, less streaking, also very vibrant. And I'm using the yellow in place of a lot of Masaki's like warmer colors. I placed it a little bit in his eyes as well as a little bit of a highlight or an extra color to make the eyes look a little bit less flat. So technically, because this was like the first spread in the sketchbook that wasn't my first page of the sketchbook, I wanted something simple and I tend to gravitate towards using like materials or mediums that I'm very used to and have very little room for like a giant mess up. So in this case, water-based markers are like, at least for me, a little bit more like low effort and limiting everything to two colors just makes it a little bit easier for me to not have to overthink of like balancing my colors too much or needing to think what colors work well with whatever colors that I already have present. So even though I'm calling this a two color palette marker spread, 
Technically, I'm utilizing white as well, and I will be doing line art on top with some kind of black ink. So technically, you could argue it's like four colors, or if you want to give me a little bit of grace, it would be three colors because some people might just be the yellow, turquoise, and black. But um, I do find it a little bit easier if you tend to pick colors that have a little bit of a difference in terms of like warmness and coolness so that you can have an easier time kind of like delegating or having a good enough difference in terms of value. So luckily the yellow is quite bright. It's not as dark as the turquoise. So any of the shadow or darker areas that I want to have a more pop, I will use the turquoise instead. So to differentiate a little bit of Maseki's hair, I did end up using the turquoise where his hair kind of has like little triangle bits where his bangs are like when they curve up and back down there's like a gap where i would usually color it darker so instead i would use a darker color to color it in and then everywhere else obviously is mostly masaki's um turquoise turtleneck or his shirt and his eye color so that's kind of like how i split everything up i ended up making the flowers also yellow because if i made some turquoise i think i would have had too much turquoise everywhere and not enough yellow. I did do the mistake and drew the clover on the very left hand side with the yellow instead so it's kind of blending in with this apron. I could have swapped his outfit if I had a little bit more time to think about it but like I said this tends to be like a little bit more of a low effort sketchbook spread for me so it's just fun to do. I don't need to worry about things looking too pristine because I'm using streaky markers. I'm probably going to pick a pen that I feel most comfortable with so it just takes a little bit of the pressure off for the most part. But by the time you're seeing this video, I think I filmed this on the 20th if I started my sketchbook on the 19th. So pretty much if I looked at my sketchbook right now, I think I've done at least one spread every day. So I have about nine spreads already done in my sketchbook. And the biggest thing that's kind of contributing to that kind of push in my sketchbook so far, or at least like me having a lot of fun and being able to draw a lot is kind of like the format and the method that I'm doing for the like a couple of the pages. So before I talk about that, let's talk about line work a little bit. So for the lines, I like I guess like one of the spreads I really enjoyed in my previous sketchbook was actually the Reimu piece where I did kind of like pink and blue. But then there was like nice areas of like pop of like a very dark ink and I went back to make sure to see if I was right and it was a ballpoint pen that I used and I just spent a lot of time just building up the ink so that it got more opaque and a lot darker so that it kind of like popped on the spread. So I decided to do that for today's little spread as well. So I did pull out a black ballpoint pen. This is the Papermate Ink Joy, which I use quite a bit if I'm doing like line work and stuff. I also missed a few areas, so I'm just gonna like spot place some of the colors back in. But um, I didn't realize I was gonna have a little bit of a struggle. So I don't know if it's like the hands, hands? The oils from my hands that's like being transferred to the paper or if it's just the kind of like water-based marker being placed down onto the paper. The ballpoint pen had a lot more skipping than usual. So typically I would be able to draw like a line just fairly consistently. And then if I want to kind of like darken and thicken up the lines to kind of make if a kind of like line weight variation, I would go back and kind of scribble that in, which you'll see me doing a lot right away, but I, I'm kind of doing it right away because I noticed that the pen was skipping a lot. So to have much more bolder and kind of more prominent line work, I needed to scribble back and forth to make sure that it could pop from the page even more. So later on, actually, yeah, I think in a few spreads you'll see later, I will switch to my, I think it's the Pentel or is it the Pilot? I always get those brands mixed up, but it's the Energel Klena. In a different spread, I used a, I think like a Staedtler pen or a liquid point pen, basically like needle point pens because those tend to be my favorite. Oh, you can kind of see me scribbling to see whether or not I was going crazy because on the cardstock, like with the paper that says focus on it, when I scribbled with the ballpoint pen, it wasn't skipping. So it had 
either something to do with the paper itself, the oils from my hands, or from the residue or something from the actual markers, not letting the ballpoint pen glide as easily. So I will probably do another spread with the ballpoint pen in the future. Maybe I'll do one without like sketching or anything underneath to see whether or not it's just the paper type because I would like to just have the ease of needing to just use the ballpoint pen instead of having to keep switching to some kind of needlepoint gel ink or something like that, which is not too bad, but it's just, you know, I do carry a ballpoint pen typically with me in my bag somewhere, so it's just nice to know whether or not this will adhere to the paper nicely. <laughs> but, um, kind of like back to what I was talking about. So, Water-based markers and like inking afterwards is kind of like my favorite method, like I mentioned, to kind of fill up sketchbook spreads a lot quicker. And I just find them fun because you can use like very vibrant colors. You don't have to have a lot of colors. So the... how many OCs do I have currently? So I have Masaki, I have Kaisen, I do have Koji, I have Akemi, I have Moriko, and Sato. So let's say six. Um, I've sketched all six of them in this particular kind of format. I think I will show Sato's and Akemi's in a future uh, sketch with me or like sketchbook video because I was kind of like rapidly just drawing in succession. I did pick a few things to record as well. So I do have like kind of like a little backlog. So a lot of these are going to be from August as we're moving towards September <laughs> um, because I kind of want to get ahead in filming and might as well film a lot of my sketchbook videos as I'm still having fun in my sketchbook and I'm not like waiting around being like, oh, Monday's gonna be coming up soon. I need to sketch in my sketchbook to make a video kind of feeling, which kind of happened a little bit like towards July and August, definitely. When I was trying to finish up my previous sketchbook, I was definitely struggling quite a bit. But I do highly recommend, try picking out like maybe one or two colors alongside with maybe a black or some kind of darker color as like your inking or your line work and just fill out little intro pages in your sketchbook of your OCs. So how I formatted them, and I did forget the format as I started to work on the rest of them, um, is basically I would draw a larger headshot of my OC being surrounded by some flowers that I feel like either fit the color palette and sometimes I pick the color palette prior to doing the sketching and some I pick like you know during the sketching session so like you know I kind of have to figure it out a little bit later so in this case I picked roses because I thought they would be easiest and any color would pretty much fit for the most part so in this case they're yellow roses um, but for other characters or like other OCs I did pick a bunch of different ones that would fit the character a little bit better and I didn't really care about the color that much so let's see, giant headshot, flowers to represent the OC, and the other thing I'm adding that has to be, or I guess there's two things. One is their name on the upper right hand corner. So you can see that I have Masaki's like right at the very top, and I would spell their name like backwards starting from the right side to make sure that I have enough room. I think for the most part, none of my OCs have like super long names. I think Masaki and Moriko might have the longer names in my OCs, so a lot of them don't have very long names, so they kind of like fit on the right hand side nicely. But just in case I like to start from the right side and going towards the left. So I would go like I-K-A-S-A-M instead of going Masaki forward and like running out of space and like needing to squeeze in all the letters in. But kind of like the last thing I wanted to include on every page is some kind of indication of what type of food or snack that my OC likes. So in this case, I drew Masaki kind of with a parfait like dessert because at least for me, um, I've always depicted Masaki liking desserts and sweets quite a bit. He often like visits Sato a lot and gets like a lot of the extra sweets, like confectionaries, candies at the very end of the day just because he likes them a lot. I feel like they give him energy and it's like he likes to treat himself kind of thing. So Masaki likes sweets. I, will I spoil the other ones? I guess like because you won't see them for quite a while, I feel like most people won't even remember. So let me take a quick look. Kaisen, I drew with salt and vinegar chips because I feel like he would like either salty foods or like very sour foods. I feel like he's that type. Maybe like sour doesn't really phase him, so he would enjoy some of the sour foods a little bit more. Um, and then we have Moriko. Moriko, I drew her with spicy food, so that's going to be for her and Sato, who both enjoy 
eating spicier foods. And then I have Koji who he also enjoys sweets similar to Maseki. They often go together to Sato's like little uh, confectionery bakery shop to get extra sweets. But I drew him with like more like rice, like rice balls, rice bowls and stuff because I feel like he's the type that might want to eat something more filling because he does a lot more like active activities and stuff. So he might need the energy <laughs> more than sugar. Uh, and then after that, I have... I already talked about Sato, so Sato's is also spicy food. And then Akemi didn't exactly have like a specific flavor similar to Koji. So Koji, I had rice. And then Akemi, I had coffee, which I've depicted him drinking too much of at some point. So I thought it'd be fitting for him. <laughs> um, yeah, so kind of like in a similar format, I have their names at the top. The giant headshot closer to the right middle of our spread and then on the very right I have like a tiny version of them with their preferred snack or flavor and then everything else I would just kind of sketch to fill up the rest of the page. So for all of the spreads of my OCs I have about four doodles, a little speckling of flowers here and there and basically two colors and some kind of dark black pen to do the line work. But I think it's kind of like a fun idea to do. I I don't know, maybe in the future if I ever feel like I'm stuck with wanting to fill more spreads in my sketchbook and I haven't done this idea, maybe I will continue just doing a bunch of intro pages for them and just trying to see what I can fill up of the spread with my OCs with maybe some sort of theme or something like that. I just think it's nice to have like a backup just in case you feel like, oh, like I have no idea what I want to draw, but I felt kind of like the urge to draw. And I feel like having OCs definitely fills that void a little bit. So I've been drawing them quite a bit. I've like, I think if anything, I've been drawing Moriko the most recently, like other than Masaki and Kaisen, obviously, because I draw them probably the most as of recent, but I will be going back to drawing my other OCs very soon. Um, like more so for different spreads in my sketchbook, but also doing like flower illustrations for them. I want to do stickers and everything. I think I talked about it on Saturday's video that in the future, I would like to do more of a OC themed store update, like a very, very, very big store updates so that um, people who enjoy like specific characters of mine can purchase, you know, something that's like them themed but then later on I would like to do a kind of like sticker club because I would love to make little themed stickers for each of my OCs or like you know them as like the main theme I think it'd just be very cute and send them out every month so that's something I'm going to be doing a lot of planning for because I want to plan at least a year's worth in advance so that I don't get too bogged down with needing to think about ideas so I'm gonna write them down try to figure out the logistics and the size and everything and kind of do a mini little sticker mail club kind of thing in early 2025, hopefully. So basically I kind of just rambled my way through into our inking session. So we are finished with this spread. There is a little bit of like the purple bleed through from the very first uh, page that I did in the sketchbook because I used alcohol markers. Some people requested wanting to see the bleed through video so I'll work on some alcohol marker drawings and we could do that together. Um, but I think that's it for today's little session and I think the turquoise and the yellow look super cute together. Oh that's another thing. I've been trying my best to keep the date at the bottom or on somewhere on my sketchbook pages so that I can actually record my progress a little bit more. So hopefully it'll keep me motivated. But for now, I think that's it for today's video. And thank you for watching me do, I guess, technically the first spread in the sketchbook and hopefully more to come in the future. So I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye.